Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art, and today we are doing Matisse Sinuous Shapes, which is this fun, playful project. Um, we have Landon here who's doing video. Hey, how's everybody doing? Hi Landon. So Keenan's sick, you guys. He's not feeling too good. Landon's so great to come in and sub for us, help him feel welcome. He'll do a great job. Okay, so we are going to be doing this project in three steps. That's it, just three. So our very first step is we're just gonna mix our colors that we need on our palette. Our second step is we will be painting all these sinuous shapes. And then our very last step is we'll be putting in our stars here. The supplies that I'm using, I have around six and around two. These are our Let's Make Art Classic Series brushes, great brushes, our go-to brushes. If you're interested in painting projects with us, I highly recommend these brushes. We are using four paint colors. So our very first paint color is deep blue. Hold on, let me do a let me do a better swatch there. Deep blue. Our second color here is oh, all my colors mixed. Hold on one second. Our second color here is magenta. Our third color here is tiger orange, which reads as a really, really warm yellow. And our last color here is black. We're using Let's Make Art watercolor paper. It's a wood pulp paper. Please make sure you paint on the more textured side. That is the paintable side. So you want it to have that a little bit more tooth to it if you're not sure which side to paint on. And I'm using Holbein soft tape to tape mine down. It's my favorite tape very little ripping occurs and I usually always get just crisp clean edges. Okay, so we are going to do our oath and then we are going to start painting. So this is Landon's first time doing the oath. So Landon, if you can raise your right hand. So excited. <laughs> Repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. And then ding the little the bell. Thank you. <laughs> and we love to start that way because usually when we're trying something new or we're painting, we get it into our heads that it needs to be perfect. We get it into our heads that it needs to look exactly like the instructors or exactly like our neighbors or better. And that is not what we're about here. We're not about comparing. We're about the process of painting and creating and learning. That is where you find the joy. That's where you find that fulfilling piece. And so this is just a reminder to breathe and have fun and play. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so my colors got a little mixed here on my butcher tray palette. That's okay though, because I was gonna mix most of them anyway. But really the color that we want to mix here is red. The other ones we're gonna pretty much just use straight out of the tube. So to mix red here, I'm going to grab the magenta and a little bit of the tiger orange. And I'm gonna get this gorgeous, gorgeous red color. So have that ready mixed on your palette. The blue you can keep, the black you can keep, and the yellow you can keep. And then the magenta, we're gonna pull, let me pull some fresh magenta, and we're gonna add water to it to make it a light pink. There we go. And have that ready. Okay. So as you can see here, we don't have any outlines and this is kind of a funky project here, which is perfect because we're just about playing and having fun. So what we're doing here is we're making sinuous shapes and by definition, sinuous shapes or sinuous means many curves and turns. So you're gonna be doing some loopy, funky, playful shapes here. Don't overthink it. This is really just about playing with your brush, doing some silly shapes. And this is really what Matisse was, well, the interesting thing about Matisse is he was known for many, many things. He was a very prolific artist in many different mediums. Um, but with his cutouts or his collages, which is what this is based off of, he used a lot of really curved shapes. And so that's why we're focusing on this. And actually this project is based off of loosely the sheaf, which is a Matisse cutout, uh, beautiful. It's not a painting, it's a paper cutout. Um, but that's what this is based off of. And I will give, I'll have Chris put up, Chris, put up a picture of the sheaf right here so you can see it. 
Thank you. Okay. All right, so, oh, and we need to make screen. So we'll do blue and yellow. There's our green. Okay, now we're ready to go. So I'm just gonna start using my round six. You're gonna hit it in the water cup and then hit it off the side of the cup so then it's damp, but it's not dripping. And I'm just gonna grab any color and we're just gonna start making curved lines. This does not have to be exactly like our reference here. The reference is just a guide for you. Okay. Landon, you want to hear some cool stuff about Matisse? I would love nothing more. Very <laughs> interested, yes. Good. Okay. So, if I can let you guys in on a little bit of a secret. Um, I actually am not, or was not, a huge fan of Matisse's work. His use of color. I, I just, I, I didn't, I wasn't. I just didn't connect to it. I really didn't. It wasn't some of my favorite. But then this last summer, I went to um, the New York and I went to a couple art museums and I think it was the Met. And they had this little um, informational card about Matisse next to one of his paintings that just like completely opened my eyes to what he was about and made me see him in a new way that I just appreciated him so much. So what it said on the card was that Matisse was all about joy. He wanted to communicate joy in his paintings. He wanted to communicate with color and bold color. Like th there were, there's this wonderful quote that he says, I have it written down here. Um, he just rejected the idea that artists should present an illusion of reality. So like for Matisse, he used color as a way to communicate and also rejected the ideas of creating a realistic painting. So that's why if you look at his paintings, they might seem flat because he didn't focus on values. Now, if you guys know what, do you know what values are, Landon? I do not, I'm, I'm fairly new to this world, so no. Perfect, I'm not sure. perfect. So, Values are the lightness and darkness of a color. So value is essentially how we create three-dimensional form or Makes an sense. illusion of three-dimensional form. So the difference between a circle and a sphere is the values on that and one is two-dimensional and one is three-dimensional. And so with Matisse, he was, cons he was a fovis. That was his style in painting. And essentially that just meant that you reject the ideas of trying to paint realistic and focus more on brushly, um, like painterly brush strokes and like bright kind of wild color that you wouldn't necessarily see together. So if you see his portraits, if you see his um, like scenes that he did, like his use of color is just um, like aggressive <laughs> in a way, in a really wonderful way. Um, but as soon as I saw, as soon as I heard that of like he was focused more on painting for the joy of painting, for communicating that joy. It's not about creating realistic interpretations of what you're seeing. I, I, he wanted you to feel happiness and he wanted that to be happy for him too. So the, the other interesting thing about Matisse is he, um, his style changed quite a lot. So he was known for many, many things. He was known for painting. He was known for um, sculpture. He was known for his drawing and technical drawings. Like he had a very prolific career. Um, but at the end of his life, he started doing more of these he called them cutouts, which is essentially what we're mimicking here. And the, the fun thing about the cutouts here is like, I know um, that it doesn't maybe seem like a wild idea to take these like paper elements and cut them out and put them together in a composition. But during that time, I mean, it was huge. It was very innovative. And um, he was able to kind of pivot his style and pivot what he liked to do in other forms 
than just painting and sculpture. And it was much easier for him to do as he got older with age. So he would have his assistants like paint swatches of gouache, like full color swatches onto these papers. And then he would just like cut out these very curvy shapes and put them together in, um, in a composition for his painting. Now, for these shapes that you're painting right now, is there any kind of template that might help people with types of shapes to go for, or just anything that comes to mind is great? That's a great question. I would say that, like, I'm kind of just going off of the reference photo here in terms of shape, and I'm really just, like, not being too precise, as in, like, we're, we're letting this go with the flow, we're being a little bit loose and playful here. Just make sure that these shapes are curvy. That's all I got. That, that's really all of it. Now, when it comes to laying them next to each other, what I am focusing on is I'm paying attention to the colors that are next to each other. So for example, like over here, I'm probably gonna do a yellow or a blue to kind of switch up visually the colors used. Because what happens is if you have too much color in one area or like the same repeating color, it can create, impl it can create implied lines in your composition. So if I did like straight blue, shapes right here, that will create an implied line where visually we will create a line right there in our painting, which is not a bad thing because sometimes we want to guide the viewer into seeing something. But on this one, I want it pretty evenly spread. So I'm just going to be aware of the colors. And you can even do like if you have one color on your brush, like I've kind of been switching colors along the way. But if you want to do like, okay, I'm just going to do all my blue shapes right now, then you can just go off the reference a little bit and just be like, okay, here's kind of a blue shape. Like that. There's another one up here. And you can do all the blues at once if that's easier for you. Or kind of take it one by one. Now we're going to talk about making these shapes themselves with our paintbrush. So, the wonderful thing about round paintbrushes is that they have a narrow top and a thick belly right here. And the great thing about that is that you can get thin and thick lines just depending on how you're holding your brush and the pressure at which you're painting. So, for example, if I'm going to do this curved shape right here, you can outline it and you can get, see that nice thin line? Like that. And then you hold it more horizontally on its side and you can get a thicker brush stroke and just fill that in. And remember, you can always go back and adjust something just because you painted something one way doesn't mean it has to stay that way. Or you can try and do it all at once, curved, fill it in. So really just kind of like play with how you're holding your brush and the different marks and shapes that you can get. And actually, I'm gonna give, um, there were some when I saw that card about Matisse, about like painting joy, rejecting this idea that has to be serious or realistic or whatever, like there, it was just like a, a switch flipped within my mind where I'm like, I totally understand the art that you create now. It just like makes so much sense. And I'm gonna, there's a landscape painting and I'm having Chris put it up on the screen right now. Um, so what um, Fovis focused on was they created scenes, specifically Matisse created scenes with a white background. And this is oil painting. So this is before he did his collages or his cutouts like he's doing, like we're doing right now. And he would use color next to each other to try to communicate the value instead of switching the value itself and have that against a completely white canvas. So if you would look at it, it almost looks unfinished. Um, but it was so beautiful. It was so gestural and what he was trying to go for that you can feel the movement and you can understand 
um, form, but in its most basic way. It's it's really um, it's really lovely. I think it's probably one of my favorite works from Matisse. Um, but he did he did so many things. He was heavily influenced by other cultures, um, by their art, by patterns, by bright use of color. I don't know. He just. Uh, I just love it when you can look at an artist's work and you can say he felt joy when creating that. You can feel that, that passion and that love for it in those paintings. Um, he was, I don't know, great at that. Would you say that's a reason why this is a good project for beginners because it kind of has that fun and free quality and focuses less on very specific skills and just has absolutely it more, yeah absolutely this is a great project to start with if you're just getting used to watercolor or if you really just want to play with colors if you want to get used to brush strokes um, if you want to feel a little bit free the tricky thing though is sometimes with beginners we um, assume that if we're taking the time to learn something that we're going to be able to paint a super realistic painting like that that's recognizable and has form and all of this stuff but painting is a skill just like any other ones it comes with practice um, to improve that skill and so sometimes I think projects like this people look at this and say well that's not hard or that doesn't look three-dimensional or like this scene and so therefore it seems to have less or no value and so I encourage us to fight that way of thinking art is not necessarily about recreating the three-dimensional world as it is we have cameras for that like we have photography we're good in that area art is an opportunity to com to communicate so much more than that and so I think initially when we think about art and look at art we assume that it needs to have these realistic qualities to be considered good but instead what if we approach it in the way of how does it feel when I look at this how does it make me feel um, what does it make me think about what is my response to it and then when we're creating how am I feeling when I'm create this what do I want to communicate when I create something what are the colors that I'm using communicating like these are all different ways of expressing ourselves which is wonderful that's the whole point of creating but yes this is this is great for just starting starting and trying something new I'm getting some wonderful mud mixed in the bottom of my palette because I think our I think our table is a little lopsided here. Now when that happens, if this happens to you, can you guys see my palette? So you can see all my colors are bleeding down and those probably will eventually meet. So I'm just going to keep adding color to the top. Um, if I was at home, I would just make sure I was on a flat surface when I was using this. Okay. I kind of went off script here on my, but that's okay. I'm just going wild and free. It doesn't have to look exactly like the reference. I feel like I need, what color should I do here? Let's do blue. Let's do some strong yellow. My yellow keeps going away. Now the other thing that I did here, and this is just an option for you guys too, because to stay true to like this project and what it was inspired off of, he did not actually paint these elements, he painted paper and then cut out the elements. So I have, where did they go? Here they are. So I did that a little bit with just some scrap papers that I had. I just literally went up to my studio and was just like, taking these scrap papers and doing just even washes across them because I was testing out colors and mixing colors. And then you can just cut them with scissors and play with them on the composition. Now, if you're not used to that kind of um, making art, we, are, we also do mixed media tutorials. Jesse is a wonderful artist. That is our mixed media artist. And we have all of the supplies to do that. So like the glue and the scissors and the paint and the paper and all of that stuff where um, how Matisse would actually create these compositions is he would cut out the shapes and then use pins to pin them onto the paper until he wanted to glue them down. So it's just like a fun way to play with different, you know, kind of get into the spirit of what he made, which I think is pretty fun. 
Okay. I think I need some like red pink up here. Now these shapes that we see here, some of them, like I would say these kind of shapes are more similar to what we would see in the sheaf, which is what this project is based off of. But he has many cutouts and there are other shapes that he's kind of known for, like these stars. That was in one of his paintings, The Fall of Icarus. Um, also apples. So he kind of has some shapes that he's really well known for. So I was just trying to like take those ideas and put them all together. But this is your painting and this is your project. So if you're like leaning more towards one of the shapes, go for it. He also created like forms with his human cutouts. There's one, I can't remember the name of it, but it's just a form in blue that's kind of like sitting folded. It's just really lovely. Okay. Okay, so that feels pretty good. And now what we're gonna do is our last step. We're just gonna go in with our black and our red and we're gonna put in our apples and stars. So if you wanna switch to your round two for this, that might be easier. Uh, round twos are just a little bit smaller of a brush. So if you wanna paint smaller shapes or get more finer detail line, you're gonna wanna get to a smaller brush. So I have black here the one color that's like, okay, all mixed together. And wherever you see some like space in between, you can just do little stars. Now his stars were not perfectly like the, this shape, boop, boop, you know, you know, when you're drawing stars, they weren't, they were a little bit funky because they were paper cutouts. So some of them were thick, had rough edges, kind of more like that. Now leave some room for your apples too. Black here. Okay, now I'm gonna put in my apples. Make sure you're using that nice bold red that you've already mixed. Magically that has not bled anywhere. So you're just gonna do a curved line, curved line, little step. Again, we're not focusing on realism or perfection. You can essentially do like a circle with a curved line if, if you want a little stem at the top. But if you're ever interested in getting some color inspiration, the palettes that Matisse chose were just so bold and interesting like colors that I and uh, to be uh, transparent I initially did not care for his color palettes and I think it was because of um, they're not colors that you would see next to each other you know what I mean like and I they weren't they didn't seem totally harmonious to me um, but it's also exciting to be able to see color palettes, portraits done in like lime green and orange a little bit. And you're like, what is going on there? Like, why is that woman's face purple? But when you can see these colors together, it gives you a great idea of what works together, what doesn't work together. If anything, it will inform you of what you like to create, what your style is, because your point of view, your preferences to what you wanna make the artwork that you want to paint is just as valid as anybody else's. So if anything, you can look at these interesting new ways of how color is depicted, how movement and shapes and form, just so different than what we've really been experienced to because it's not focused on values. It's not focused on capturing realism. It's focused on something totally different. It's just an opportunity to figure out what it is that you like. Okay, that feels pretty good. That feels done to me. What do you think, Landon? Does that feel even? Yeah, no, I think that looks great. Okay, I think I'm gonna do one more apple down here. But it's always a good idea to kind of step back from your composition, give it a minute. When you look at something from far away, um, it gives you a better idea of what it is because when you're like six inches away from your painting it's super hard to tell what's even going on so like take a break walk away from it or like 
sometimes I'll hold whatever this is taped on, I'll like stand it up if it's not wet and dripping and look at it from far away and then you can see compositionally, are there gaps? Is there one color that's just like overtaking the whole thing? Did I want that to happen? And you can adjust from there. So I think that's our project. We did it. Good job, you guys. Okay, so if you are on Facebook, you can join our watercolor group. It's for the sole purpose of you guys just talking, sharing what you're learning, sharing what you're creating, connecting with each other. It's so much easier to do something new when you have a community behind you. That's called Let's Make Art Watercolor on Facebook. If you're on Instagram, you can tag us at Let's Go Make Art or hashtag Let's Make Art. And if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. That's it. Landon, great job. Thanks. That was great. fun. Great. Okay. We'll see you guys later. Bye.